بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, this is the first lecture um, in our course um, about creativity critical thinking uh, and research skills uh, the first uh, chapter we are dealing with or we are introducing in our um, uh, lecture is about introduction to uh, creativity in business um, these these are the the, the main uh, outline the main uh, uh, topics we are uh, discussing in this chapter we will start with the definition of a creativity more than one definition actually uh, in order to provide the deeper understanding of what this term means how ideas arise uh, importance of creative thinking in business and in management what do we mean by paradigm shifts and then in the end, we will talk about characteristics of creative thinking and skills of creative uh, persons. These are the, 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 the chapter uh, main uh, topics of the chapter, our chapter outline. Let's start with the, uh, the first issue in our chapter. It's about defining creativity. As we see here, this is the formal definition of a text we are using in our course, creativity is an ability to come up with new new here is a key term for creativity with new and different ideas viewpoints and acts on the subject so newness uh, something original something that has never been created by anyone else before because if it is so it's it is it could be innovation uh, it could be imitation something unique yes but it's not new so the main point here in understanding creativity is to come up with something new uh, I'm bringing as well here uh, extra uh, understanding of the term uh, by saying that creativity is about bringing something original not copied or derived and never seen or brought uh, before uh, of course, the main quote we have from the uh, Quran Al Karim here, "Al Samawat Wal Ard, Alati Khalaqah Al Mawla Jalla Wa Ala." هي هي شيء إبداعي تماما. فلذلك الآية بتقول بديع السماوات والأرض. في سورة البقرة الآية رقم مية وسبعة عشر. ف creativity the main issue the main meaning of creativity is come up with something that has never been brought before something completely uh, new and different we cannot start our course actually be, be, uh, uh, without bringing Thomas Edison Thomas Edison is the icon is the uh, uh, inspiration of this area actually by his great uh, um, creative acts and innovations. And the most famous one of them is the electric uh, light and electric uh, distribution systems in um, cities and countries and so on. Uh, so I brought the, the, the picture in order to get inspired like me by these great persons, the greatest of all time, actually. However, uh, he's not the only one. Uh, when we talk about creativity, usually come to our mind artists, right? Artists. So I brought some example of Egyptian artists here because they are uh, gifted from God. They, what they do is um, always new, always original. Uh, I'll start from left here. And then Ahmed Shawi, Amir Shara. Uh, our uh, great uh, novelist writer uh, uh, Nagib Mahfouz Said Darwish Azam uh, Musiqar greatest composer of all time in Egypt in my opinion because some people may say Abdul Wahab or Sumbati okay, like in, in my opinion it's Said Darwish uh, actress uh, and then I mean there is Bardo Dam in Wigat Nazari, some other people may say Fatah Hamama or Saad Husni or but I choose I mean there is uh Mligi Firm al Ard Tawan I cannot uh, ignore the uh, how genius uh, he is not he was he is because it is 
it will be uh, f uh, in our mind forever. I choose Fairuz uh, f uh, as singer, the best of all time. Uh, um, طبعاً, يعني one of the greatest. But I consider Fairuz a human. <laughs> she is an angel, actually. Uh, so I brought Fairuz. I brought artist here in the beginning of our chapter uh, because it's by default when we talk about creativity we think about the mubdi'een who are the mubdi'een and so on uh, it's the type of area that they are dealing with you cannot be uh, one of uh, a famous one in this in art unless you are gifted you have this mean from God uh, above in order to be a novelist or um, a poet or something like this. However, there are some professions, some areas you don't have to be gifted. You can still you can be creative as well. So I brought other areas like this. Uh, in architecture, as we see, this this is a creative act, as we see. Uh, whoever have brought this, have designed this and implemented that is creative as well. Uh, creativity in design as well as in advertising. Design as well in uh, 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 chips and electronic uh, products. Researchers, they uh, fight and work hard in order to bring original ideas so uh, they are creative as well but the, their creativity doesn't have to be uh, gifts from God uh, it comes from following research methodologies then in the end they come up with something creative in management and economics we cannot forget those uh, entrepreneurs and uh, great thinkers in business and in so I brought Talat Harb. Talat Harb is a great uh, example of all time. It's not an example. It's, he is the greatest of all time, actually. Moses Bank Masr uh, and all those uh, great Egyptian companies like uh, Studio Masr, uh, Masr Al Alban, Masr Al Taamin. All these. Uh, great companies that established the um, the old and uh, foundation of the Egyptian economy came from this great person. He is a creative person, uh, and this came by hard work actually. And in football, we cannot forget, of course, uh, in our uh, history, Muhammad Salah. Muhammad Salah is not like Messi or Maradona. He's not gifted from God like them. However, by hard work, uh, by developing his or his skills, he became one of the top ten, maybe uh, in all time um, in the world. So you don't have to be an artist like in the previous slide here. However, in hard work, uh, by using uh, in hard, uh, by hard work and uh, working in some areas, you can be creative as well. Saying that, by saying that, uh, some people say, no, uh, creativity is not a hard work, it is a gift. And some other people say, no, no, creativity is not a gift, it's something that you can develop by hard work. So this is why in the uh, following slide, I brought these two, two uh, extreme points. Is creativity a trait or a practice? A trait means that it's, it's something came from God. It's a gift. Uh, you are born with this trait, like in the artist examples I brought here. And on the other side, some people say that creativity is a practice. It's an activity. It's something you develop uh, in humans. Yes, you may not be gifted as a musician, but you can learn music. And then in the end, you can compose. You can compose some tunes or something like this. Uh, this issue about creativity is a trait or a practice is left to you, or we will discuss it here in this chapter. What do you think? Is it a trait or is it a practice? Let's see the definitions, different definitions of creativity, and judge whether it is this way 
uh, this side or that side. Uh, of course, before uh, presenting uh, the different definitions of creativity, we need to mention that uh, it, it's, it's, uh, creativity is something uh, complicated and have different facets or different uh, uh, dimensions. Uh, however, some are trait-oriented and some uh, are uh, 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 practice-oriented. Uh, while reading the definitions, to try to, uh, to distinguish and see whether the definition belongs to this or that or both. Um, here we go. The first definition we have here, creativity involves breaking down and restructuring our knowledge about subject in order to gain new insights into its nature. This is a definition. Uh, it seems from this definition that it describes creativity as if it is a mechanical uh, process. Structuring, uh, abstracting, breaking down, uh, and then if you follow this, in the end, you will come up with something new. It seems to me like uh, whoever has brought this definition is uh, biased toward creativity is a practice site, not uh, a gift site. Anyway, a similar definition here by uh, Fertheimer. Fertheimer has, says uh, uh, creativity is breaking down restructuring, organizing our knowledge to get new uh, insights. It's a good definition. Uh, it might be, in my opinion, I don't know yours, uh, is biased toward a practice site. I will remind you, Olna, we may see creativity as a trait or a practice. The two definitions we have so far, I believe, or I think it's a practice site. Okay. Uh, let's complete here. Uh, third definition by Kelly and Rogers, understanding how we think, uh, which means how we understand our cognitive model. Cognitive model. Pretty similar to uh, Fertheimer, uh, how we think. It's like assuming that uh, uh, thinking go through specific uh, model which is called cognitive model here, cognitive model, نموذج الفكري أو المعرفي, how mind, how brains work. We need to understand how, how brain work. Here is a theory about how brain or how our uh, minds work. Some people describe uh, the stages we go through when our mind work is through five stages. Minds first go through perception stage, then retrieve knowledge stage, then thinking stage. Number four is judging, and number five is learning. In perception here, uh, our minds receive information and events. It's pretty logical, right? Uh, when we think in the beginning, we read something. We see uh, something. We notice uh, something by any uh, sense we have. Uh, it's like having an antenna, right, and that 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 uh, receive uh, information, right? Uh, it differs from one mind to another, by the way. Uh, they uh, whether signals or uh, information or data enters. Uh, differ from one person to we may see things that others may not see while we both are looking at the same thing so perception is part of how your knowledge uh, or, I'm, I'm sorry your cognitive model works perception stage number one okay what you have perceived here what you have received here uh, brought to your mind and then your mind begin to uh, uh, come up with an understanding of what does this you have read or received mean. In order to, 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 to have a meaning, you need to compare it with something else, something that you've been through before, some knowledge you had in your mind, in your memory, to compare, right? So before you compare, you need to find some similar knowledge. Yani when you read something, you compare it with something you read before, right? So stage number two is retrieving knowledge. And that knowledge comes from your memory. So our cognitive model 
uh, from uh, differ from one person to another uh, relying on or based on how your memory work how do you bring previous knowledge uh, if you have Zheimer for example or if you have uh, <laughs> some um, disease in, in in remembering or something like this that would affect your cognitive model of course and maybe you may not be creative in the end so the second thing you have here is retrieving knowledge, something related to what you have received. And then after uh, bringing both of them, the percept uh, what you have received and the knowledge related to it, you begin to think. In thinking, you compare between both of them, right? And that would bring you what is called here understanding. You, you, you come up with a concept, with a meaning of that. Then after understanding, digesting what you have read and what you have retrieved from your knowledge, you come up with a judgment, a viewpoint, a conclusion, and you begin to look for the future. What are you going to do or what are you adding to your knowledge in, rela in, in related to what you have uh, newly uh, received? Uh, from information that is called here plans so in judging you come up with viewpoints ideas conclusion and about the future you think in plans in what are you gonna do finishing stage four right you store what happened to you you stuck you store it has when you store this in your memory for later use that is called learning that is called learning so in learning we store experience and information we've been through through all these uh, four stages after learning we go to stage number one again when you receive new information and then retrieve knowledge related to it compare that to this and then come up with the judgments and learning again so it's a cycle it's a cycle we do. that's what is called here the cognitive model it is how people receive, perceive, retrieve, knowledge, think, judge, and learn, and so on. Five stages. This model assumes that people, that people uh, uh, have stages, and these stages are organized. It's like a train that go through stops, okay, and the train stop in each stop, uh, right? Uh, in some sequential manner uh, but does our model work like that do we go through stages like that every time we think and we come up with does creative person think like this I don't know yani, uh, do people think in the same way and uh, do creative people show better ways of using such model yani, uh, uh, the difference between a creative person and non-creative person is how this model work this is another uh, issue we need to think about. Uh, if you think that creativity is about the model and how this model goes through, uh, then you are practice uh, biased. Uh, you remember this slide, and we say that creativity is a trait or a practice so if you believe it's a practice then you may believe that creativity is about how the cognitive model work some other people believe no 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 it's not like this a creativity we don't go through stages like that uh, it doesn't have to be like this right why because people may come up with new ideas without going through stage one two three four jump directly to an idea you may get uh, an inspiration and then an idea come to you without receiving information and comparing and so on why people say that they give these examples they say for example in creativity we see that children are more creative than adults and that may uh, become an, an evidence or support the idea that trait is all uh, what creativity is about uh, because children they don't have great knowledge right they don't compare like us they don't they, 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 they don't uh, manipulate their minds like this they just in shape they have this uh, uh, 
doing things without fear, right? Uh, research studies show that uh, in IQ tests, the, the children they may get higher score than adults. So the, this is the, this is part of another uh, uh, evidence that creativity may present more in children than in adults. Also, as well, uh, the cognitive model assumes that you are working hard, go through stages. Stage number one, stage number two, and then you, in the end, you come up with a new idea, right? In reality, some people realize that creativity, creative acts, come through dreams, come through relaxation, uh, repression, and whenever you, you don't have much defenses, you are relaxed, and then new ideas come to you. So this is another point that negate or uh, show that it doesn't have to work like that. Uh, another definition for tolerance here, the process, uh, creativity, is the process of becoming sensitive to problems, defenses, gaps in knowledge, missing elements, uh, disharmonies, and so on. And this is a trait-oriented, yani this definition uh, is more related uh, to believing that creativity is a trait, not a practice, because it comes whenever a problem happens and you are sensitive to this. So then ideas come to you uh, suddenly. Whenever there is gaps in knowledge, whenever there is uh, missing elements or something, uh, your imagination uh, invoke or uh, come to you and then you come up with uh, ideas uh, or acts or whatever that represent uh, creativity. Let's complete in our definition. Ricard say that personal uh, creativity is a personal discovery partially unconscious process as if you see in unconscious mean that you believe it's it's a trait whenever you are you can escape from mental stuckness okay uh, so whenever you are relaxed you are part you are away from uh, your mind is blocked in something and then ideas come to you uh, creativity gained through images and sensations which are difficult to express in words this is a trait oriented definition uh, Weinman or Winman, the ability to go beyond the mundane and obvious and reject the traps of repetition and preset uh, categories. This is a trait uh, oriented definition that we have here. Whenever you are away from the world, we are living here in right, in, you are in the sky, as you say. Mundane, uh, being creative. Uh, you see this? This is a famous uh, saying. Being creative is seeing the same thing as everyone else, but thinking in something different. So it's not a practice, actually. It's, 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 it's that you have great imagination. You, you don't believe in a status quo. You, you, you see things uh, like the others, but you think differently. So this is, uh, it's like a trait. It's like a gift-oriented uh, definition. In order to understand uh, the meaning of creativity as well, we, we, we bring uh, uh, some more um, uh, points about it. The point we have here is to compare it with uh, innovation and invention. Uh, innovation is very close to creativity, but it's not, innovation is, is not coming up with something new. It's coming with something that is, uh, was there, okay, but to use it for the first time. In Arabic, ابتكار جاية من التفكير. تفكير يعني إيه؟ أنت the first to do that. It was there. The idea was there already. But you you had this idea applied for the first time or in a new way that have not been used before. But the idea was there. This is why Maslow believed that there are two levels of creativity: primary, when it is new discovery, which is real creativity. Secondary means that it's an idea was there, okay, and uh, uh, departed from this idea, another one, which is called here innovation. Uh, the invention here, it's another term, so we have creativity, innovation, and then invention, invention here. Uh, uh, we are talking here about uh, introducing a device. 
a process, an application on some ideas that is there. So applying a, a creative idea uh, in order to come up with a device. It's like coming up with an airplane, uh, electric telegraph, uh, lamp or steamboat or something like this. All these are use of some theory or some idea, right? So an invention or application of uh, a new idea or uh, a creative uh, viewpoint or something like that. Uh, we're still talking, discussing um, the meaning of creativity. Um, some people say, no, 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 it's not a trait. It's a trait implicitly means that it, it comes by chance. It's a gift. Inspiration comes from God. Some other people say, no, no, no. It's something that develops something that you work hard on it. You are looking for it. You are studying and inquiring and searching and so on. You have to be a scientist or something in order to come up with a new idea. Of course, this doesn't apply on Muhammad Salah, for example. <laughs> or, but those people believe that this is what creativity is all about. It's doing, working hard. It's not a chance process as we see here. To bring an example for you, I brought some great uh, research acts, like Rodolf Janisch, 1988, who uh, invented or came up with a great uh, creative uh, uh, results or conclusions about gene research. He implanted uh, uh, diseases, human ones, hereditary diseases in mice, and that was great discovery uh, as we see here. So this is a creative act that came by research, right? By uh, uh, stages of research, uh, scientific one, and then it led to this great act. It's not by a gift or an inspiration from God. Um, uh, also, as well, uh, uh, Haik owns. Uh, I'm trying to bring the greatest um, uh, creative acts by researchers in, uh, in all times, as in the textbook. In 1911, Haik owns um, uh, discovered the superconductivity uh, by uh, discovering the uh, connectivity of different. Uh, materials and uh, uh, metals like in mercury and other metals alloy and so on and how they in low temperature what happens and so on that that was that that is his lab in 1911 uh, another example the many examples here now of course we have the great Fleming professor Fleming who discovered the effects of benzene. that was great discovery of the future and actually, this one came by chance. Of course, there was a research, but Fleming discovered the idea by a chance. He noticed how the color uh, and the uh, features and uh, 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 um, characteristics of bread changed. Uh, uh, anyway, I'm not scientist i'm not uh, specialized in this but it came by and uh, it was called at that time the happy accident uh, actually this slide try to uh, prove or negate uh, the idea of research uh, it says here that great ideas come by chance come by gift from god even in research in research they discovered uh, the stethoscope this is the one that we use in uh, uh, in medicine that that came by chance that came by uh, uh, Linick who discovered this uh, great invention by noticing two boys uh, uh, communicating um, t uh, transmitting uh, sounds by a seesaw by some wooden uh, um, uh, device. Then he came up with the idea close to this that we are we see nowadays by physicians or doctors. Westinghouse, Westinghouse, a great, one of the greatest of all time in electric uh, machines. Uh, he uh, invented the air brake. 
by reading a journal that uh, compressed how compressed air power was used uh, uh, to cut a tunnel to cut a tunnel this is a great uh, it needs a, a great power so he thought that we can use air as well in air brake for uh, uh, locomotive or trains also as well these great scientists came up with the idea uh, of representing a benzene ring by having a dream of um, a snake who's swallowing uh, its tail so you see a great discovery like this came by chance came by a dream uh, so that 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 was uh, the um, uh, examples uh, of how creativity is a trait and how creativity is a practice. We will stop at this time, at uh, that point, and then we complete uh, lecture one in another video.